Hello, I'm going to show you how to make a really gritty, dirty, grungy, high contrast black and white effect with a color photo. This is what we're starting out with, and this is what we'll end up with. Okay, now I'm not going to actually recreate the entire image from scratch, but I will show you the layers and the adjustments that I did. And whenever I show you an adjustment layer, I will bring out the adjustments panel up here in the top hand right, and uh, it's where a lot of the action happens, so keep an eye on it. Okay, now let me introduce you to Larry. This is Larry. He's a cool guy. All right. Now, whenever I do this kind of conversion, I always like to first look into the shadows and see what kind of detail I can bring out of them, because nothing makes a really grungy black and white than a lot of shadow detail. Now, there's not a lot of shadows in this image to begin with, but just for the heck of it, I dramatically fill lighted it, and after some deliberation, I decided that I wanted to bring some detail into the, the brim of his cap and into his shirt. And the end result is subtle and nice. Now I'm going to convert it to black and white using the channel mixer. Whenever you do this, always just stick to the six presets that come with the tool to try and find the most natural black and white look for the image. If you try and get all your dramatic effects using these sliders, you're going to have a headache because you're going to end up blowing stuff out and it's not very flexible. So leave all of your tonality adjustments to curves. The difficult part of this technique is not doing it, but figuring out how to do it what to enhance, and what to mask out. The first thing I noticed was that Larry's beard is extremely bright and uh, extremely large, and I need to take some attention away from it. So to do that, I clipped some blacks, brought the shadows down, increased the contrast here to really show that this is a wiry old white beard. Next, what I did was I darkened the face just a little bit in the areas that I wanted to see with some shadow at the end. Just brought the midtones and the shadows down and after that I added some contrast to the face by boosting the highlights, bringing the shadows down. The difficult thing about this is that as you see it's very very highly masked and it can be difficult while doing this because when you're doing the initial adjustments you're doing it to the entire thing before you've masked it. So it's hard to say, yeah, that looks good. So you really need to know before you start adjusting what you're looking to adjust and what you want to see out of it. Okay. So for the eyes, I like to boost them up real nice, get a lot of, uh, a lot of sparkle in them. But as you can see there, by just flipping all these whites, I made it a little too bright. So what I did after that is I did the exact opposite. I clipped a bunch of blacks, and what that did is it left the image, uh, the eyes, with a lot of sparkle and then darkened the rest of it down. Now, most people have some white on both sides of their eyes, but Larry is kind of squinty, and I just don't think it really looks very natural. So what I did is I actually used white to paint in white on, on both sides of his eyes. Now, I don't often like really bright eye whites, but in this case, toning it down actually didn't work very well um, for the image overall. Now, I noticed at this point that his beard is still really powerful. There's too much attention to it, and I just want you to be looking at the face, not at his beard. So I did another adjustment, a white point adjustment, where I brought the white point down about 17%. So now it's a light gray beard, and instead of getting stuck up on it, your eyes go right to the face. The last thing I did in terms of effect was big contrast boost, pretty, um, pretty simple, lift up the highlights, bring the shadows down. I really like clipping blacks to a certain extent. It's really pleasant for the eyes when there's a nice solid black that it can grab a hold of to. Um, clipping highlights, that's different. You shouldn't do that because it looks cheap and unprofessional and just looks blown out. So be careful when you're working with your highlights because you just don't really want to blow stuff out. Be careful as well when you're clipping shadows because if you start blocking up the detail in places you actually need to see detail on, that looks bad. Okay, so I've gotten all, all that I want in terms of effect. Now, the last thing that I need to do here is just um, visual aesthetics sort of thing. So I don't like this car, and I don't like this brightness, and I don't even like his jacket. I just want you guys to see Larry. So I added a vignette. When I vignette, I 
Oopsies. On iVignette, I do it all manually. I don't do it in RAW, and I don't use elliptical marquee. I want to see what I want to see vignetted, because if I start making this dark and his hair dark by some generic process that I can't control, it just doesn't work out. So I like to do it all myself. This next layer is a gradient map that I was actually going to use to do some sepia toning with, but it ended up looking crappy. And when I turned it to luminosity, it brought the midtones down a bit and enhanced my vignette a little more, and, uh, and I liked it. The very last thing I did was I added a very faint sepia tone to the image. I did a few adjustments on the red channel, a few adjustments on the green, not much. But mostly, I just grab this the white point of the blue channel and yank it down a bit, add a tiny bit of copper toning to the shot to give it a bit of a retro look. Now, what you'll actually see here is that the opacity of this layer is at 40%. And originally, it looks like that. Right? That's too much. So you got to also know, when you're doing these adjustments, that uh, when you do it at first, it's going to look a little too heavy. And so you got to realize that Yep, after you do it, you're going to bring it down a little bit to what you actually want it at. And that is the end. That's how we turned Larry from an old man into a weathered, grisly, leathery old dude. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give it a try. It's fun. Good night.